welcome. Uh, I think uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, blockchain, non-fungible tokens are the future. And uh, it's very, very interesting all the development that is being and, and happening on a daily basis. And I think there are lots of opportunities to explore in these areas. I'm here with my colleague, Fabio, to speak a, lot, a, a little bit about these opportunities, what Portugal offers, its regime in, for uh, tax terms, in te, uh, for non-habitual tax regime, and also about uh, the low level of taxation if you come to Portugal and develop here your activity. My colleague, which will be speaking about this issue, uh, he's not only an excellent lawyer in the area of taxation of all these uh, cryptocurrencies and tokens and blockchain system, but he also mines at the same time, of course, not in a professional, not in a professional way. So he tries to get most of the knowledge possible concerning the world of cryptocurrencies and blockchain. And therefore, uh, I'll give him the floor now. Thank you very much, Tiago. Uh, good afternoon to all that exists today to our quick webinar regarding all these topics that Tiago was mentioning, namely cryptocurrencies, non-fungible tokens and blockchain. Basically, the future is digital. And this is one of the reasons that we are here today. Uh, Tiago Guerreiro is an international law firm based in Portugal with several offices, uh, headquarters in Lisbon, branch office in Porto and in Faro in the south of Portugal. Two. So going directly to the topic of our uh, webinar, cryptocurrencies and, of course, all the different way uh, that they are treated from a tax perspective or regarding the uh, concepts. So as you can see here uh, via our first slide, it can be considered well, like transferable securities, financial instruments, co uh, currencies, commodities, crypto assets crowdfunding so it exists several applications on several concepts that are related to uh, what cryptocurrencies we can do with it or uh, different concepts that they are called depending uh, on the platforms that we uh, are using so we can find first of all advantage and disadvantage regarding cryptocurrency so as an advantage we can see the possibility to transfer amounts to any place on the world um, basically transactions that are protected by uh, a cryptography is like military level uh, it, it's a network that operates 24 7 um, you can do payments at bars restaurants to buy things online etc uh, so no need for per uh, permission so you don't have here a third party in the middle like the traditional financial system where you have the bank and you have to order the bank and the bank will uh, assume your order and uh, go through uh, that same payment or that same uh, bank transfer to another bank account or uh, even as can be used as a private payment method uh, because you don't have here a third party as i were uh, referring we have some, of course, disadvantage uh, regarding uh, the cryptocurrency world that it can be like they can be served in means of payment for the black market and white collar crimes or more connected to financing terrorism activities. And most ritual trade wallets do not have uh, the necessary security to be used for storing currency. Uh, we have several platforms and different ones with different level of security uh, comparing binance coinbase KuCoin, name it several uh, wallets different levels of security or republic registration etc so high volatility risk of market and bubble market of course as we know it's a very volatile uh, market where we live in cryptocurrency change uh their amounts and development valuation uh even from hour to hour um lack of protections in general terms because it existed a general lack of regulation regarding institutions working with cryptocurrencies 
or uh, on a private level, even from a tax perspective too, and we will go uh, to that point further on this presentation. And the price is not clear. Uh, and from, of course, it exists some operational system fails uh, or information little uh, affinity with the truth. So maybe you are speaking about uh, speculation. So let's go directly uh, to uh, the cryptocurrency legal uh, framework. So several activities related with cryptocurrency are not uh, in the scope of the European Union financial service law, but are foreseen in domestic legislation. So to give you a quick reference uh, to Portugal, what we have in regulation in terms of cryptocurrencies, non-fungible tokens, mining, etc., from a tax perspective, of course, is just a thing called a binding opinion issued by uh, the Portuguese tax authorities. So when we have at least two binding opinions regarding the taxation of cryptocurrencies, and on this topic, um, buying and selling of cryptocurrencies, if not done through a professional structure, a company, uh, or as if it is not your main activity, uh, it will be exempt from taxation in Portugal. It's not because Portugal is a crypto-friendly country with crypto-friendly regulation. It's because of the lack of regulation that we have here at the tax level. Uh, of course, keep always in mind that if you do it, the buying and selling of cryptocurrency on a professional level uh, or through a structure like a company, it's mandatory to register the company or yourselves and the Portuguese National Bank, call it Bank of Portugal, um, basically because of this know your client information or from a perspective of uh, financing of terrorism, white collar uh, crimes, uh, things like that. So this is the important topic to keep in mind if it is done through a professional structure or in a professional way as your main activity, it's mandatory to resist yourself at the Portuguese National Bank just to register the activity and not the Bank of Portugal then does not check transference, the buying and selling of crypto assets themselves, but just the company or the individual in a professional way that is developing such uh, activity. So this is, a thing to keep in mind and of course uh, we can say that in the future uh, more regulation on a national level will arise because as you, as you can see from a tax perspective for several countries in the European Union like Germany the United Kingdom uh, we already have uh, tax provisions regarding this specific activity uh, and of course uh, it will happen in the future in Portugal but we don't know when, no, uh, rather than why uh, it's going to happen because from a tax perspective, it can be treated in several ways. And actually, while fulfilling the annual tax returns in Portugal, we don't have a specific box or a field or a form where we can indicate uh, the income arising from these activities connected to the cryptocurrency uh, role. Even from a VAT perspective, is exempt in Portugal. It's I, I was talking about two binding opinions issued by the Portuguese tax authorities. One is regarding uh, ERS, so the, basically the tax returns and all the categories of income that you have to declare here in Portugal. And the second one was regarding VAT, uh, and it is concluded that virtual currencies are exempt. In the same way as traditional currencies, provided that such financial transactions have been accepted by the parties to a transaction or an alternative means of payment and do not have a purpose other than serve as means of payment. So in this case, VAT will not uh, apply. Going further into our presentation, our SI was uh, talking income obtained from cryptocurrency. So the sell, buying and selling, if not done through a professional structure, or if it's not uh, carried out as a professional way or the main activity of uh, a citizen or someone living in Portugal that is tax resident here, uh, it's not going to be a tax. And this is the reason that 
the Portuguese tax regime, and then I will speak a little bit about the non-habitual tax uh, regime, NHR. Uh, is booming uh, because we are receiving a lot of demands from people that have earned uh, a lot of money from buying and, and selling of cryptocurrencies. But of course, they are w wanting to uh, change the address to Portugal and, and in fact live in Portugal so they can sell uh, the crypto assets that they have or the specific coins that they have with uh, no tax. Of course, you already have uh, for sure information about several uh, digital uh, coins like fiat, digital fiat that they intend to be created like euro or dollar. It's uh, every day on the news speaking about digital euro or digital dollar or digital yen in China, uh, several information. And we believe that in the future this will uh, happen, but this is activities that of course are centralized on the national banks and it's not our main topic uh, today. Uh, how I was saying, so we have a directive uh, issue DAC issued by the European uh, Union. So we are speaking about EU rules uh, regarding this registration that I was talking about um, within the Bank of Portugal, the National Bank for Crypto uh, Activities, that it's a really recent uh, law that we, we have. So what is happening recently? Bank of Portugal takes over cryptocurrency supervision, so Central Bank of the Portuguese Republic. And this was exactly uh, what I was uh, explaining. So every company or individual having custody or custody services and administration of virtual assets or instruments that allow to control, hold, store, or transfer these assets included private cryptographic keys as to do the registration on the Portuguese National Bank. So let's go directly why Portugal is uh, appealing from a perspective of the crypto world, even from a perspective of mining, from a perspective of uh, creating and selling non-fungible tokens. So it's almost a package. Portugal has not fiscally framed the income generated from these virtual currencies, exactly the same for the selling of um, non-fungible tokens in NFTs. And we have the binding opinions that give us some uh, legal security about the interpretation uh, that the Portuguese tax authorities will have uh, regarding these types of income. And of course, we have the non habitual resident tax regime, the NHR, that is appealing for who has already a European passport and intends to come to Portugal. And quickly, uh, it's a tax regime that will grant you, in principle, uh, almost all income arising from abroad of Portugal will be exempt here. Um, and we have a special tax flat, flat rate of 20% for uh, income arising in Portugal when regarding uh, to high value added activities that are specified in the Portuguese uh, law, uh, it will apply a 20% tax rate. And the Golden Visa regime, that is a program uh, that has several options for investment. Uh, the most common one is through the investment of half a million euros in real estate here in Portugal. And it's used uh, for citizens that don't have a European passport. Uh, and then they can connect this Golden Visa program with the non-habitual tax residency regime and of course connect everything to the cryptocurrencies non-fungible tokens mining etc buying and selling in portugal being portuguese tax resident and of course take advantage of our lack of regulation and having it here a zero percent tax on such income so Thank you very much for attending our quick webinar here today. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, after this presentation, we will send it by email. So feel free to uh, send us all your questions and doubts that may arise. Please have a, a great day and it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you.